So the other day, a bunch of new machines showed up that I ordered. I got a CNC lathe, a big giant vertical bandsaw, and a new box and handbrake. And I sat there looking around the shop in this latest expansion, and I was like, how did I even get here, right? Well, it all started in my home garage, and a lot of people have been asking me recently for some business-related stuff, you know, how to grow, expand, start, everything. And I got this idea. Here's a really cool tool that you can build in your home garage that you can use to probably make some, uh, some side cash. So if that's something you want to learn about, stick around. So the bandsaw is an extremely versatile tool, but when you get into the metal cutting category or what it's capable of doing, you'll notice that they go up in price significantly, and especially the bigger they are, the more expensive they are. And yeah, we're not even going to go that route because uh, in your home garage, you probably don't need anything that big. So I started looking into portable bandsaws because they can obviously cut metal and they are very popular in the small home garage fabrication kind of environment. The only problem is, is they usually only have one orientation, which doesn't allow a lot of precision cutting. So I bought a new DeWalt. I'll tell you why I chose DeWalt in, in a minute. But uh, this plate, quarter inch aluminum. Uh, get it over at Weld Metals Online. The dimensions are 20 by 16. You punch that into the uh, sheet metal size cutter thingy majig, and it ships right out to your door. So you can follow along with that, right? Now, most portable bandsaw stands, they stick the saw at the end of the table, so it just kind of works well in the center there. But if you wanted to do something like cut down some U-bends or do precise or repeatable cutting, then it's terrible because you only get the top quarter of the table to work with. But if we move the saw over to the side of the table, then we can utilize basically the rest of the table space and we can cut down more precise and repeatable parts where we need that flat surface to keep it guided on. So this is a uh, DeWalt portable bandsaw. I chose DeWalt because of this heavy backing plate right here. So out of all of the other saws that I looked at, you either have to build some sort of adapter thing or the hardware was very weak. This hardware is the largest, I think, out of all of it. And then this heavy plate right here will also help stabilize the saw on the end of the table. First thing I want to do is get a few measurements overall. So if I know it's going to be mounted off to the side like this, I need to find out how much I need to cut out for this section of the bow or actually this section of the motor to fit or notch this side of the plate out. Calculate that offset. I also want this blade to be basically right here in the center. So we got to cut a little slot out there so that way we can slide the blade in and then get our mounting holes and everything else like that on there. So this looks like in order to get the blade down the side of it here, we need to cut about two inches out of the top here. And then this is uh, what, 20 inches long. So we gotta go to about 10 will be the center. So then we gotta cut about five inches or so out of the top here. That's where we'll start. Yeah, I actually just had to remeasure real quick. The uh, bandsaw blade is only about an inch and a half uh, from the motor side itself. So um, I'm gonna mark it at an inch and a half in and I want it halfway down the plate, which is 10 inches. So at 10 by about an inch and a half, that's about where our blade is gonna go. We'll have to slot and cut that out. And then here, a little more precise measuring, it's about five and five eighths. And I think that saw is only limited to six inches anyway, so good thing that works out. We're gonna go two inches so we have a little bit of wiggle room. And here, just to make it look kind of nice, I don't want like a perfectly square cut. I think what I'll do is drill it with like a half inch uh, drill and that'll give us a nice radius corner. So we mark a quarter inch in. Let's see, right about there. So if I put a half inch hole right there, that'll give us a nice radius around that corner. We'll obviously be slicing this whole section out here just for the blade to clear. And I'm not sure how I want to do this. The blade's 5 eighths of an inch, but maybe if I put like a series of small holes, because I don't really want a big hole right here, like, you know, that. I'm thinking maybe I get like a series of small holes and then I'll just cut out the center of it. And I don't know. We'll see. Let's see. 
So I just did some thinking real quick and you know, I like the idea of having a slit as opposed to having a hole right there. But the problem is when you put the blade in, it's gonna have to turn uh, and have a little bit of clearance or relief to do that. So if I did a small slit right there, no way it would actually fit. You wouldn't be able to turn that blade. So we're just gonna opt for the hole. How to make a bandsaw stand using a bandsaw. <laughs> a little bit more. There we go. Nice. Just a moment ago, I went to go bust out my grinder because I'm like, I want to clean this edge up, but look in the drawer and it's not there. I think I took it to the shop a while back. So I'll just use a file. I could use the exercise. That looks pretty good. I can handle that. Okay, so. As I mentioned before, the reason why I chose the DeWalt over any of the other saws was because of the hardware and the design of this plate right here. This plate, super sturdy. The hardware, the biggest out of all of them that I checked out. No special adapter required, nothing like that to make it mount. It just makes it just flat out easier. So, let's see. Those sit about three quarters of an inch away from the blade. And the blade's at an inch and a half into the table or into the plate, so three quarters of an inch off the edge. We're at an inch and a quarter uh, spread apart, and that sits at about, from the center of the blade, about an inch and a quarter. So our first hole is going to be about there. The second one's going to be about there, about three quarters of an inch in. We're probably just going to speed this up to make it a little bit easier. Okay, the DeWalt hardware is six millimeters and we want a little bit of wiggle room in that. So I'm going to go for a quarter inch hole. The reason for the wiggle room is so we can get the saw squared up. It'll have a little bit of room to shift, which is a good thing. We're going to countersink these. That looks good. This hardware here is a little bit longer than the factory DeWalt stuff. The DeWalt hardware is 16 millimeters long. It's an M6 screw, but it's a 16 millimeters long. And since we're going through an additional quarter inch, I bought 20 millimeter screws. Okay, before I can mount the saw to it, we're gonna find a way to mount this to the table itself, which since we have a fixture table, uh, we're just going to use the holes that are there. So I need the edge of the table here for clamping when I put the fence on and, you know, set all of this up. So um, we're going to go three inches up and looks like three inches on both sides. So an inch in plus three inches up, we should be covered. This little guy here is the uh, 10 millimeter drill and tap. Obviously I'm going smaller than the bolt hole size. So that gives us a little room to shift and maneuver it around and square it up, et cetera, et cetera. But this is the uh, drill tap combo, which I love these things. So these are just uh, 10 mil studs. 
They're obviously uh, going to be more than the thickness of the plate, but if we get them in tight, then uh, I'll come back with my grinder when I remember to bring it back home, and we'll grind the tops down on that. Probably come back with some thread locker too. See how I mentioned it, we got wiggle room. We'll want to get those a little bit tighter. Because if the saw cuts crooked, that's a bad day. Okay, another area I want to add some hardware to is right here, so that we can drill through this uh, plate itself and that will keep this gap a little bit bridged and also add some stability. You know what, let's look semi-professional here. Rather than just sticking a, uh, eyeballing it, sticking a bolt just somewhere, let's make it look like it was designed for it. Because that should look a lot better. business right there. I like that. Nice and sturdy. Heck yeah. Okay, now for some fun stuff. We get to actually use it. This is a cheap foot switch from Harbor Freight. Hopefully it will last one job. I think I'll use this little tie that it came with for now to hold the trigger. Perfect. Okay, we gotta build ourselves a fence to uh, guide along here with. This is quarter inch aluminum and this is eighth inch angle two by two. Um, I probably would have liked some quarter inch, but you know, the hardware store didn't have any and I'm trying to go with, uh, you know, common things that, you know, people have access to, et cetera, et cetera. Let's see, this probably only needs to be about that wide ish. 14 inches ought to do it. Oh, I should mention this is quarter inch by two. And this, since this plate is 20 inches, this is two inches, that means this should be 22 inches. That math checks out. Now, since I have hardware from uh, the saw, I have the original uh, six millimeter hardware it came with. You know what, I don't like that. We're gonna do one here and one here. So I have this six millimeter hardware that came with the saw that we can uh, use to bolt these two together. You could weld it, but uh, the whole point of bolting it is so that way in case you need to make some fine adjustments or whatever, you can do that and then tighten it down with the hardware. If you weld it and it was slightly off or whatever the case, then you have to make another one <laughs> or deal with parts that aren't square. And that's not really a good thing.
Well, ain't that something. I broke it. That kind of sucks. I'll just have to get replacement hardware. Well, it's as square as it can be, at least for now. Should do for the rest of this video. You know, as I'm looking around on this, I'm seeing something here. And it's these threaded magnetic fixture thingies that came with the fixture table. I should have got the right hardware for this. Actually, I do have the right hardware for this. It's 10 millimeters, I think. So, hold on. So what I'm thinking now is if I get a 10 millimeter screw, I could use these. If I get that, uh, that, that type of same type of screw that I can countersink and recess that in there, then I can use these as the nut on the back side of it. That would probably work out a lot better. See, sometimes the first design is not always the best. And I'm okay with that, because that's how you learn. So, there we go. Let's check this to see how square it is. Yeah, that works. So this fence now can slide along. We can mount it wherever we need. And then we can cut whatever we need, which I have something just for that. It's just kind of like a proof of concept here. This is going to need to go a lot slower. That worked out pretty damn good. Now, if I had my welder here, I'd weld that up, chop that section off, weld another straight to it, and then sell it as a blast pipe. So this is the part of the video where I ask for your help. A lot of people have reached out to me asking about business-related stuff. Now, there's not like a one-size-fits-all type of approach to business, so what is it that you want to know? Is it uh, understanding how to get things like this for cheaper, or how to put it on a website, or how to price it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? If you don't know what invoices are, you know, and you want to know about how all that system works, let me know. Just uh, drop a comment down below, and I'll see if I can get to it before I get to the next episodes involving this. I do have to get some more hardware, um, so... You know, I'll do that before the next, uh, next run of things. Got to order up some tubes and supplies and all kinds of other things. So let me know what you want to know. I hope you found this info information useful. And of course, if you go over to weldmetalsonline.com and buy your plate, test coupons, everything else from there, I appreciate it. It helps us out tremendously because, uh, yeah, I employ a lot of people now <laughs> and I got to pay them because they don't work if you don't pay them. Anyway, I'm gonna get out of here because it's still uh, not blistering friggin' hot outside and uh, I've been waiting four years to go out and try out my new purchase. So I will see you guys on the next episode.